You will remember from your last test review podcast and the first unit test that sometimes the AP exam will include multiple questions on an image or a pair of images. We only have four images, including a paired temple and floor plan for this unit. The test will also include 30 general multiple choice questions, some of which will involve images as well. All of the matching questions will appear, even the squirrely materials and techniques questions. You know I'm not crazy about these, but you will have to know this material. And finally, you will have one one essay question. Let's start there. This is actually an essay question from way back in 1992. That exam featured a different but very similar Egyptian statue. I've modified the question to reflect the current AP curriculum. I've also included the dates on this slide. You will not need to give that information. So here's the big news this time. You are getting the question in advance again, but this time you're going to have to write without notes. I'm deflating the water wings a little. Eventually you'll have to jump off the diving board and answer a question that you haven't seen in advance. The first two parts are very straightforward, but you will have to have this information memorized. You can answer both parts in a single sentence, and you can refer to the works as a work on top or the work on the bottom. Part C asks about the function of these statues, how they were actually used, and how this relates to each culture's beliefs. Remember that this is an invitation to write as much as you can about the culture as well as the work of art. Include specific details and use your art history vocabulary. Using specific evidence is even more important when you answer Part D because you're going to want to make specific references to the way the works appear. Don't be afraid, by the way, to note similarities as well as differences. These are both works of ancient Near Eastern, Eastern societies, and there are important similarities, especially in style. Again, try to use your art history vocabulary. This work shows up not only in your image-based questions, but in your regular multiple choice questions as well. It's a longtime College Board favorite, so I have a lot of old questions I can use. By the way, if you see several somewhat repetitive questions about the same work of art, that usually means that this question appeared in multiple past AP tests, or that it shows up in several of my sources for, on the new course. In other words, it's one you should know. So what do you need to know? Who are these people? How was this work made? Make sure you know the difference between bas relief and sunken relief. What function did this work of art serve? What event did it commemorate? What stylistic conventions do you observe, especially conventions designed to highlight the relative importance of the participants? I'm going to give you one very broad hint, since I think one of the actual past AP questions I'm using is unclear. There is no historical record of the specific event shown on the steel, that is, Hammurabi's investiture by a god. But Hammurabi is a real historical figure. We have lots of evidence of his rule. By the way, one of your wrong answers about this work will be metal repoussé. You haven't encountered that. It's a sculptural technique, really neither additive nor subtractive, where thin sheets of metal are punched out into a shape. The gold face of Agamemnon, a Greek work, is a famous example. Actually, it's Mycenaean. I'm just telling you this so you won't worry when you see an unfamiliar term on the test. By May, you will know a lot more art vocabulary. Ah, one of the very first works you encountered in this course. If you did the summer reading and viewing. So, how does the artist show rank? What animals are used to symbolize the pharaoh? And hint, in both cases, these animals are shown making life difficult for an enemy. And, note that I said animals, plural. What do the small stacked bodies represent? What is this work commemorating? What is the funny guy with the hat on the left side doing? And finally, what is the term for the way the narrative is arranged? Again, think Calvin and Hobbes. By the way, the questions refer to left and right sides. That's as you see them. So the serpopards, the funny entwined animals, are on the right. Let me also note that one of your general multiple choice questions asks why this work is so important in art history, and for that matter, in history. You should know this. So, what do we always want to know? What is this work? In other words, you need to identify how you need to identify it, sorry. How was it made? Where was it found? And what function did it serve? How did it reflect its culture and that culture's values and practices? What's happening here? And I added some questions about who or what shows up in the circles. 
So this is actually a question from the revised curriculum. It's closer to what you'll actually see in May. What do you need to know? Well, what are the columns in the hypostyle hall imitating? We talked about this. As a pharaoh walked through the temple complex, starting at the pylon gates, moving through the hypostyle hall, and finally ending at the sanctuary, what would have been his experience? What changed in terms of the physical appearance of the rooms as he moved further and further into the temple? I don't think you'll have a hard time with this one, but note that the plan comes without labels. Here's a hint. He begins here. Do you remember the term for these? He enters an open courtyard, and then he enters this segment of the temple. Note the light source. You remember the term for that, right? And what kind of a hall this is? And finally, he comes to the inner sanctuary. And do you remember what would have rested there? I don't think you'll have a hard time with this question, but this image, which doesn't appear on the test, offers a big clue. Think about the relative roles of the pharaoh, the priests, and the ordinary people. And here's another clue. So how would you describe the character of the laws written in the cuneiform on this steel? I've included a pretty broad hint on the slide. What are the characteristics of relief sculpture in the ancient Near East? What devices are used to show narrative to indicate an individual's importance or impotence? What are the names for the three kinds of stone relief you've encountered so far? So only uh, the work on the right is one of your required images, but I think it's quite possible you would be asked to identify the likely period of the two works on its left, and that shouldn't be hard. We talked about this when we talked about how New Kingdom architecture was different from Old Kingdom architecture. What would you not find in the building on the right that was originally placed in the buildings on the left? Think grave robbers. So this is another image or question that showed up frequently on past exams. I guess the college board thinks that these are cool too. Know what these beasts were called and their function at the palace. This is a materials question and not an easy question, although I don't actually think you'll have trouble guessing the right answer. Remember that the Mesopotamians were heavily dependent on trade. They produced a lot of valuable agricultural products for sale, but they needed to import many items, including stone and what's the white stuff? Where does it come from? So I actually found this question, or rather the right answer choice, a little tricky. Scribes were members of the upper class, but they were not pharaohs, and that's probably the most important reason why the scribe's body is shown as less than perfect. But that's not one of the choices. And I just note that his clothes do not show especially high status either. But what did scribes do all day? They sat around, right? What happens to couch potatoes if we're not careful? There's another question about this work. What is its function? You know it has something to do with the afterlife because art in Egypt always has something to do with the afterlife. But I don't think I mentioned in my lecture that this was found in the general vicinity of the pharaoh's tomb. Actually, scholars aren't entirely sure of where it had been originally placed since the site was heavily looted. But I think it's pretty clear that the scribe was ready to go to work for a reborn pharaoh. It's also possible that this was a Ka statue for the scribe himself. But this was an old kingdom work, a period when elaborate tombs tended to be reserved for the pharaoh arrows. And I thought this was another tricky question. One obvious advantage of sunken relief on columns, as this photo com coming from the temple at Karnak shows, is that it casts strong shadows in the strong Egyptian sun. Of course, the sculptures would have been painted back in the day, but the shadows still would have highlighted the message. Sunken reliefs also preserve the structure of the columns. They still look round and therefore create the impression of a papyrus forest. But the expert who wrote the question says they are not easier to carve, so I just gave you the answer. The correct reason for the sunken relief that surprised me, since it seemed to contradict the point about retaining the column structure, is that sunken relief hides the function of columns as supporting elements emphasizing instead the images and messages that are portrayed in the sculpture. So sunken relief maintains the uniformity of the column shape while also focusing attention on the message. Well, I think that's a little confusing, but probably right. The person entering the temple was bombarded with important messages, but also confronted with an image of the primeval forest. Sunken relief accomplished both.
while raised relief sculptures would only preserve the message? Anyway, I just gave you the answer. As always, I included this question, even though I thought it was confusing, because I want you to get used to, well, confusing questions that somebody else wrote. There are a number of similarities between these works. I don't think you'll have trouble figuring out the right answer, but note that you will not have the image for the question. You know this guy, right? Subtractive sculptures include carving away at material, usually stone or wood. Additive sculptures are built up, usually of clay or metal. What's tricky here is remembering which figurines are carved, that's subtractive, and which are made of clay or metal, additive. I'm looking for a term, not the specific place, but you should know the place as well. So on this plan, where is the main entrance? Really, the only entrance. Does the plan show you anything about the height of the walls or the ceilings? By the way, the answer to that one is that it doesn't. For that, you need an elevation, which is a different kind of plan. We'll see a lot of elevations when we get to medieval churches. What are the characteristic stylistic features of this culture's art as exhibited by these works? You haven't seen the image on the right, but it's from the same culture, which you need to be able to identify. By the way, these images themselves won't be on the test, just a description of the stylistic conventions. I've had you focus on Old Kingdom and New Kingdom, but this is an actual old AP question. What's tricky about it is that one choice is 2000 BCE and another is 2500 BCE, which is closer. Just look this one up on your works list. I hope you won't get that specific a date question on the test, but this is an old question. It might happen again. So I didn't include this image in my lecture slides since it's all text without images. But wouldn't you know it, it turned up as an AP question, and I forgot to add it into the lecture this year. Well, now I'm adding it. This is the Rosetta Stone, which had the same inscription in three languages, one of which was hieroglyphic Egyptian, and one of which was ancient Greek. Since scholars knew Greek, this proved the key they needed to decipher hieroglyphics, so it's very important in world history. What two required works that you've studied are carved with gray whack, which is a hard, dark sandstone? I'm showing you a picture of the rock and another sculpture that was made from gray whack. Hint, one of the works is from ancient Egypt, and one is from our global prehistoric unit. By the way, you have studied three works carved from gray whack. The answer will have just two of them. This is one of the most famous moments in archaeological history. In 1923, Howard Carter opened this previously unopened, undiscovered tomb and found an incredible gold coffin, which I had a chance to see in Egypt when I visited. Whose coffin was it? You know that. This is an example of, I'm not looking for a specific identification, but a vocabulary word used for this kind of stone commemorative slab. And this is one of those terms you also need to know, but I think it's an easy one to remember. You recognize a pylon, right? This is actually from the Temple of Luxor. Note that the walls slope like the mountains they are imitating, and I just gave you the answer. This is another term you need to know, lots of vocabulary. This photo will not appear on the exam, but it should give you the answer. Good luck on your second unit test.